Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about rebasing. Uh, I'm right on time with this. What is it? 2020? And uh, a lot of people were discussing this in 2015 so feels like the right time to record this particular tutorial. But some of us, myself included, still have some armies that are on square bases. And so the concern becomes how do we get them from this to something that is not that, namely nice round bases. So in the previous tutorial, you watched me make these bases. And uh, now we're gonna show how we actually get the miniatures over here. And I wanna talk about a couple different techniques because the reality is there's no one size fits all for this. It depends a lot on how you previously based your miniatures. But let's start with essential tools. Essential tools. A good pair of clippers. Don't use your nippers for this. Don't use something small and precise. You need something with some weight to it. In fact, if you want to go all the way up to full-size cutters, that can be even better, depending on the size of your base and how particular these things are. Secondly, you're probably going to end up needing your old, your good old X-Acto knife because you might need to cut something, smooth something, etc. And then, of course, we're going to need some glue and some accelerant. So, let's get into the basics first. If you're... So here is a Storm Vermin uh, from my... Um, here's a storm vermin from my Skaven army and uh, if your new basing scheme is going to look exactly like your old basing scheme then there's actually a really simple trick like let's say you're just sitting on mud like you have kind of mud the, the mud and two tufts GW strategy if that's what you're using great well then your life becomes very easy because you're going to take your clippers and you're going to cut right along the line of the edge of the base, okay? So essentially you get a nice flat space like that. And you just repeat doing that over the whole thing. If you've got any like mud or any hangover like I do here with stones, that's fine. Don't need to worry if some stuff falls off, no big deal, okay? I have a magnet on the bottom of mine, which would make this rather challenging. I'd have to cut the magnet off, but I'm just showing you what to do. So we take all four of the sides off, which is actually not too complicated of a prospect. And most importantly, you don't have any risk of like hurting your fig when you do this, right? So then you just get a nice flat little guy. Like I said, I have a magnet. I'd need to cut that off and that can be rather tricky and complicated. I'm not gonna do it in this case but you have to effectively get your clippers in there and kind of work it up. You can also put these in the freezer. If you're trying to break old super glue, putting stuff in the freezer overnight uh, will generally crack and weaken super glue. When you pull it out, it'll pop right off. Anyways, if your base is like this, you can just cut off the corners. So like here in this case, these guys went from 20 mil squares to 25 mil rounds, which is you know, generally how things go where the old model's base would fit completely on the round one. And in fact, Ta-da, you can see how that would fit perfectly on there. What I would do is I would glue it to my new base and then I would just mud right around the edge. You wouldn't be able to see the edge of the square anymore and bada boom, you're done. Easy peasy. Now, if your guys are attached to cork, a lot of people use cork in their basing. Uh, so here's one that I actually pulled off. Then it becomes a lot easier. Your figs will come out of cork even if they're pinned as you can see this model was. They'll come out rather easily, and then it's just a model of matter of cleaning the bottom of their feet with your X-Acto knife. You just scrape the bottom of the foot, and they can stick right down. If, however, they're directly glued to the plastic, which many of us do, this is where it gets complicated. And I think I managed to achieve the worst possible basing to need to rebase, which has been fun doing all 300 of these. In that case, what you're going to want to do is cut near the foot, but not directly at it. Don't try to be so exact that you're like shaving part of the foot off because that's your risk that you will cut off part of the foot, okay? Instead, just clear out the extra and see what naturally comes off. Basing material will fall off, right? If the foot comes loose because they weren't super tightly attached, great, that's a win, okay? But don't try to like 
take your your clippers and cut exactly next to the feet. Like, don't try to be in here like, tick, 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 tick. I'm gonna cut around each toe. No, 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 no. All that's gonna do is cause you a bunch of heartache and result in a lot of your miniatures losing their feet, frankly. Instead, cut away a bunch of the, the sort of all the extra stuff here, okay? So that way you get, you know, just kind of, they have these little foot pads. And then what you can start to do is just carefully shaving it back, okay? Like in this case, this guy has this little magnet, which is not gonna wanna come off without me tearing the foot. Fun times, I placed that in like maybe the worst possible position. Aha, there we go, magnet came off. Sometimes if you just crack it up and loosen it enough, the magnet will come off on its own and now it's easy. Now we can just go in and we'll keep cutting. This is a great way to make a mess, by the way, of your desk area, your floor, all of that. Boy, is it a fun time. Uh, I do highly recommend having your vacuum on hand to vacuum afterward. But basically, you just kind of cut your way around. You can bring in some nippers at the end if you want to just clean up the last little bits. But effectively, what you'll get is these guys on little foot pads then. Now, in my case, most of the time, I just left it like that. I would just glue them down because once they're down on the base, you can't really notice the extra little, you can't really notice the extra little foot pads. It kind of just looks like feet, okay? Especially when these guys are all ranked up. Again, never let, just like I said in the last video, never let perfect be the enemy of the good. However, if you're inclined to remove them completely, then the key is you've got to get a good hook into one side of one of these things and just start pulling at it because it's gonna be real glued on there. And you don't wanna take the foot. So what I do is I just kinda of find a place where I can get the corner of my clippers on there, work it out, and then we just start until eventually we get the whole piece off. And it just takes you to kinda of work it around like that. Is this process fun? No, 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 no but it's not that hard, okay? So, uh, and then once you've got that off, then you can just reattach them to the new base. Uh, what I will say is, in general, when I'm reattaching to bases, which I did a whole video on attaching minis to the base, in this case, I didn't pin these guys or anything like that, that's good enough. Got enough of it off there. You can also come in with your X-Acto if you've got a little bit of detritus. You can kind of clean some of that off. All right, just kind of come in. Give it a good scrape to get rid of all that excess stuff. Gonna break his halberd if I'm not careful. There we go. Okay. Then we take a little bit of Loctite. Put a little bit on foot number one. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Put a little bit on foot number two. Okay. Let that kind of set for just a second. Then we turn them to where we want them to face. Press him down, touch it with a little accelerant and hold him in place. And there we go. And he's ready to go. In the case of bigger minis like this guy where he's on cork and you have a lot of extra base around them, like this guy's too big to even fit in frame. This is obviously my vermin lord. Here, he's pinned into this thing but it doesn't matter. Here, what I, what you would generally want to do is just rock them back and forth until they come out. And that's pretty easy. Right? And he's free. And the pin will generally come out with it. And now it's just a matter of lining him up to the new base. Right? And then drilling it in and setting him in place. So real, the, the really big miniatures are usually the easiest. So for example, when I did like my warp lightning cannon or whatever, this I was just able to rock off of its old base because it was attached to some cork and then glue it down on the new one and now it's all set. Uh, I'll take the little rat off too. He can join, he can join his friend. We don't want to leave him behind. Okay. Now the other models that will cause you the most consternation is if you have anything on this type of a base. I wanted to use this one because I wanted to call it out specifically. These old cavalry bases are so annoying because they're so thick and tough, okay? 
So if you can get the fig to just come out on its own by squeezing at sort of each end, each corner, and they pop out, like if you didn't use a lot of glue, that's the first thing to always try. Just see if you can kind of loosen them up, crack some glue. And by spreading it at the opposite corners, you see I'm holding this lower corner and this corner, opposite corners like that, and then pushing, you can kind of loosen that glue up a little. But chances are you're not going to be able to get them all the way out unless you did like a really poor job attaching it the first time. So we're going to use the same basic strategy here, except I'm going to cut directly through the middle of this thing in a few places. Again, never up to the foot. I'm always staying with some distance in between where my clippers are and where the foot is. And I'm just doing that to kind of start working this side off, right? By creating those little cuts, each one of those kind of weakens it against that cavalry base in the center, okay? Then I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. Just kind of come in, we'll clip against that hole. Fortunately, I was bad enough not to fill that hole. So kind of pull the extra stuff away. Again, this, the, the basic strategy is still the same. We clear away all the big chunks. The reason I do lots of little cuts on something like this is because it had so much extra stuff underneath, all right? Then once I've got this big piece out of the middle, then that's where I start coming in and trimming away all the individual pieces and parts. And again, never cutting directly next to the foot, always cutting in between out in a safe area where even if my clippers jump a little, they're not gonna jump and slice a whole foot off. A little bit of tiny detritus at the bottom of your miniature foot, nobody's really gonna notice that. Uh, an entire foot missing, eh, somebody might notice. So again, just chewing away more and more of that, right? And then what I do is I'm just gonna come in and start clearing off those individual pieces. Just cutting next to it. Slowly working my way up to the foot itself. The advantage to doing these smaller controlled chunks is that you just have a lot more precise ability to make sure that you can set your clippers down, keep them stable, cut, and leave the foot completely intact. Okay? Rotate the miniature a lot so you're lining your clippers up with the right angle. And there we go. All removed, all ready to go, four feet still intact. And then we've got our little cavalry base and we'll glue him right on there. So same story, second verse, same as the first. Uh, one final note about reattaching things. Sometimes you'll get a little white fuzz uh, from where your glue spills over. That's fine. Depending on your base, if it's like mud or something like that, then all you have to do is take a little wash and uh, run your wash over that space. And it'll uh, mute that right back down. If you have an unusual colored base, if they're on cement or if they're on something like that, you just take some of your original paint color and you just paint back near the foot. It's kind of a minor step you sometimes have to do depending. But there you go. And now they're all ready to go. Ta-da. All right. So that's it. That's how you attach. And if you just follow those steps, you too can have a giant pile of junk on your desk, just like I do. This is so not even all of it. This is only part of what's off camera on my desk. My desk is a wreck right now because this is 300 Skaven worth of glorious old disused bases. So, there you go. Um, that's how you reattach. Remember, there's a couple different methods just to cover, recover real fast. If you've got a square base and it's gonna go on to something where this, what's on there now is gonna be the same as what's on the new basing scheme, just cut the corners off, lay it flat, mud around the edge, you're done. If not, then use your clippers and clip in towards the feet 
but not next to them. Clear away the bulk of it first, and then start slowly removing tiny chunks until you can get up to the feet themselves. If there's a pin into cork, then something like what this big guy had, then the key is you just wanna rock them real slow to loosen the cork, because it'll never be too strong. And then once you have the actual cork, you can see how there's still some attached to his feet. You come back in with your X-Acto and you just scrape that away and get you right back down because you don't want to reattach that cork to your new base. That will help prevent your glue from forming a good solid bond. But it's easy enough to just scrape that cork right off. So there we go. That's how you uh, move from squares to rounds or rebase your miniatures. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. If you've got any questions, drop those down in the comments below. But as always, I thank you very much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.